Hey guys, welcome back. This is the lecture number 72 from our bootcamp series. In the last lecture, we discussed namespace and scope routing in Rails. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss one more important concept in Rails and that is concern. Now, what is concern? So whenever you create a new Rails application, you can see a concerns folder inside app models or app controller directories, uh, just like this. Uh, let's open your controller folder and in the controller you can see there is a folder or directory with name concerns and in the model there is also a concerns directory okay and we write reusable modules here and these modules are known as concerns however this is not a proper definition of concern so what is the proper definition of a concern so let's look at a rails concern is any module that extends active support concern module okay and this is a bit different from usual ruby module okay a typical ruby module just look like this like you can define a typical ruby module with module and module name and then inside that module you can group methods or you can group classes and method inside those classes and so on but a concern looks like this okay you can create a concern with some module name and then you need to write extend active support concern or you need to uh, extend this or extend your module with active support concern and in that concern you can write your method or you can write a reusable code that you can uh, that you want to use into your application okay now you will understand this concept more clearly when you create a concern okay so here we will create a concern and use them into different models but before creating a concern first open the schema file of the course project in the schema file i just wanted to show you some tables with common attributes like you can say that i have a blog table here a courses table here which has attributes name and description and the same demo table which attributes name and description and the projects table which with name uh, with attributes name and description okay now suppose if we want to add validation for name and description then if we do not use concerns then we need to write validation for validating name and presence of description into the model itself okay and here i have already write that validation for example uh, let's open the course model first so here it is the course model it is the demo model and this is the project model okay here in course model you can see that i have a validation on name and presence a hey, name and description okay so name presence true and uniqueness true and description presence true and length validation with minimum and maximum character lengths okay and the same validation i have write in demo and the same validation i written in projects okay and now let's see how it works on the browser or how it works on the rails console so let's first try with the browser okay let me see what views i have okay i have used for courses and projects and we will try the demo on rails console so let's open the browser okay so in the browser you can see that i am at the index page of courses resource okay now when i click on a new course and i submit the course without filling name and description so now uh, let's click on the create course and you can see that I'm getting the validation error that is name can't be blank description can't be blank and description is too short minimum is 10 characters why because we added uh, minimum 10 length character uh, validation there okay now if I made it uh, more than uh, 10 characters okay so it's more than thousand so let's forget <laughs> and now same thing you can try with the pro projects resource as well let's write projects Okay, so when you click on new project and you submit the project without filling any uh, name and description let's uh, click on the create project you can see we are getting the same error here okay now this is perfectly right that we added some constraint on or some validations on our models with some attributes to prevent user from filling uh, empty forms for courses and projects and demos that is totally fine and correctly uh, 
completely correct but what uh, wrong we are doing here that we are repeating these validations inside the modules inside the models okay like uh, in the course model we have same validations for uh, name and description attributes and same in the demo model and same in the projects model as well and this is not a good practice because rails encourage us to write dry code i mean have a single uh, appearance of common code which is required across multiple files so just to avoid the multiple occurrence of a common validation we will create a concern here and that will make the validations reusable in our course project and demo model or it, here the course projects in demo model are just for examples if you have same kind of validation then you can apply it on any kind of model or any model in your application okay so let's start creating a concern in for the active record model so go to the app models concern directory and let's create a validation here a concern here with name validator so we will create a new file inside the concerns and let's save this and let's name it as validatable validatable.rb okay now it's time to implement this concern so first we need to write module and validatable and inside that module you can write let's say included do uh, first you need to extend the active support concern here now we can write our common validations here okay so let's write the common validations here we need to use included block here in this included block let's uh, copy the validation from any of the model we will copy from course models and let's save this and paste these validations in from the uh, into the concern class okay now save it and remove this validations from demo model save it and from the course uh, project model as well remove the validation from here as well okay now we remove validations from course demo and project models and we added them into the validatable module now we need to include this module inside the models where we want to use these validations okay so including a concern module is same as including the ruby module inside your classes okay so let's include validatable save this and copy the same line and use the same line inside uh, both demo and projects model so include the validatable module into the demo model as well and into the project model as well okay paste it save it okay now let's see how this validation works now okay so go to the browser okay now visit the index page of the project click on the new project and submit on empty form okay so we are still seeing the errors and let's try for the same for the courses model as well go back click on the new courses and click on the create courses without submitting any data so now we are seeing the same validations here as well so here you can see that we do not write validation inside the project model demo model and courses model but uh, we can still see the validations error why because we reused the validation inside the validatable module and we are including this concern module inside our active record models okay and that make our works uh, work very easy okay and you can see that we achieved the same functions by removing the validation from all the project course and demo models and just write them at one place into concern okay and just like these validations you can write more common code which does the same thing in multiple places into a concern like scopes instance methods and so on okay for example if you want to 
create a scope where you want to fetch all the courses or projects which are created in this month then you can uh, uh, write a scope here like let's say scop scope and you can write let's say current month current month and in this scope you can pass pair created it or well, let's make it a range eight dot today dot beginning of the month to date dot today dot end of the month beginning of month and end of month so what this scope will do that this will find all the current month's projects courses and demos for you okay so this is just an example you can extend this functionality or extend this behavior as much as you can okay so i hope that this lecture has given you a brief but enough idea about active support concerns okay now you can try these more at your end and let me know if you have any doubt or questions or even if you are facing any issues in working with concern i will be glad to help you however just i just wanted to remind one thing that here i used concern inside the models if you wish you can use concern inside the controllers as well for example if there are some common callbacks or filter actions that you need to include in any of the many controllers and uh, you are writing them in controllers each controllers individually then you can create a controller concern and in that and that include that concern inside your application controller or in any controller and then you can use that functionality okay so the creating the concerns for controller is as simple as creating the concern for active record models okay so i wish i hope you can now extend the functionality of the concerns and you can go more deep in that okay so that's all from this lecture thanks for watching this and let's meet into the next lecture till then tata goodbye take care and stay safe